Sit down, my son. Me, see, when I phoned you the first time, I asked whether you were a Zulu or a Tosa. And I, what, think, what I, I think you said neither. Yeah. Then I asked you, are you Chwana or something or the other, but I f- forgot what you actually said. Yeah, I said my <clears throat> Swazi. Swazi. I remember now. I remember now. Yeah, Swazi and Zulu are sister languages. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I think one of the 11 languages, Swazi will be also one of them. Yeah, it's been included. At 11, 11. Yes, 11. It won't be counted with the Zulu, so well, it's the same language, no? Yeah, but there is difference between Swazi and Zulu. And yes. But when I speak to the Swazi Zulu, they seem to enjoy. Yeah, because I mean, the languages are similar. Right, yes. right. Yeah. Now, I received a three and a half page letter. Yeah. Duly, duly received. And uh, something that intrigued me. Yeah was the statement of yours. It says, I was actually helped by the Holy Spirit, Paracletos, to yes. write you this letter. Yes, helped. In other words, you were moved yes, by the Holy Spirit. Yes, In other words, inspired by the Holy Spirit. It was helped by the Holy Spirit. Moved, inspired. You would say you were inspired? Yeah, I was helped. Yeah, so how does he help you? That's the Lord Jesus Christ promised. Yes, yes, no, no. No, 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 no. I don't want a lecture. Yeah. Help is moved. Yes, sir. Right? You inspired. Or you say you were not inspired. He was helped. Yeah, you were not inspired. Yeah, because as, as I want to tell you, he said, he said he will help us and we will be able yes. to recall. Right, right. All now, the people. Bible, the other Bible says inspired. Well, that you are inspired by the Holy Spirit. No, it's what I have written there. No, no. The word, the, the synonym for that. Yeah. You say the Holy Bible is the King James Version. Yeah. You said the Holy Spirit. Yeah, the Holy Spirit. Right. The King James Version said the Holy Ghost. That's right. Right. But you choose the word Holy Spirit. That's right. Because you were helped to say that. You could have said Holy Ghost. I could have said Holy Ghost. Ah, but you, no, you chose Holy Spirit. Yes, Holy Spirit. Can, deliberately, it went through your mind. Not Holy Ghost, yeah. because it's a synonymous term. In the King James Version, that verse there, it says the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. But now, in your Bible, it says the Holy Spirit. Yeah, so it's a synonymous right. term. And you can even refer to a modern versions of the Bible. Right, right, right. The NIV and all other versions. Right, 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 right. They say right. the Holy Spirit. No, that's quite. Yeah. No, no. So, whether if I use the word Holy Ghost, you won't be offended. You can't uh, be offended. I you think... Can... I really don't mean the meaning of... I don't know the meaning of the word Holy Ghost, because uh-huh. I know... It's a Bible for yeah. a thousand years. For a thousand years, all the Bibles had the word Holy Ghost. Yeah. This modern translation, you say they use the Holy Spirit. Okay. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So, if that Bible, if I have the King James Version, if I read from that, yeah. That the Holy Ghost came yes, and right. and conceived Mary. Yes, yes. You can't have any objection to that. Yes. You say, no, 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 I don't accept the word Holy Ghost. Yeah, but now, as you know, Mr. G, that the, the Bible was originally written, I mean, the, the New Testament right, was right, written right, right. Was in Greek. Right. Okay. And the meaning of the word for, for spirit in Greek well is I mean, the that thing that, that word pneuma. Right. It means spirit. Right, right. Now it there is no there is no word for ghost in Greek that you know. Yeah, no, there's no way I know. So this word pneuma can be used for spirit as well as ghost. See there's no separate word yeah. for these two things. Yes, right. In Greek. Yes, right. I think that you know. Okay. There are no separate words. The word is pneuma. Yeah. For spirit is pneuma, for ghost is pneuma. Yeah. But now let me say it this way. You know, versions like, well, I, I actually call versions as a word of God, but you know, versions like the King James Version, I don't think, you know, they have some Trinitarian inclinations, you know, because. Obviously, they were, they were rendered or translated by the Trinitarians. Right. So, right. I right. 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 so now they usually use the word Holy Ghost right. um, to support the uh, doctrine of the Trinity. Right. 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 Maybe. 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 Might maybe. Might be the reason. Maybe. Because maybe. I have one of the 
که بابل کامپیوتر به معنی دست کار است به جمع ویلسن اسپیتیک دایلوگ یا یو نو ویلسن سید دیت نو ویژنز لایک د کین جیمز ویژن رایت آر نوت ای ترو رندرینگ اف د اوریجینال گریک تکست اس نوت ا مین ویلسن الون ایون ادرس کار است یس بیلیو دیت بیکاز آی دونت تینک دیس کار آی مین دیس کار است وی You know, it was sponsored by King James himself. Right, 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 right. You know, the Anglican Church. Right. They accept Trinitarians. Right, 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 right. right. They were Trinitarians. Yes. Yeah, the Trinitarians. So what was suited them? They would lean that language yes, right. to support their theories. Yeah, that's why there are even spurious verses in the King James to support that Trinity doctrine, like First John five seven. You know that. Right, yes. right, yeah. right. I'm not agreed. Agreed. Now you offer me here is that I can give you a free home Bible study. That's right. That's what we do. Now you were helped to write that by the Holy Spirit. Were you helped to write that? I can give you a free home Bible study. That's right. Were you helped? Believe by the Holy Spirit. Yes, I believe. Right. Now you know that I live in Verulam. Verulam. Mm-hmm. I know that because right. I saw your address in. That's right, right, right. No, no. You write to me here. Yeah. Forty-nine Verulam. Yes, yes. So you know I live in Verulam. That's right. Now you can come to my house every week to give me a study in the Holy Bible. In the Holy Bible. Uh-huh. Well, I can arrange, but now as from well, you said, I you said I can give you you. Yes. yes. That's I. That's right. I can give you a free home Bible study. That's right. Now, can you give me a free home Bible study? So I say I can. You can. That's right. Then from <laughs> was this Saint Andrew Street. Yes. St. Andrew Street to here. You know, you wanted two weeks. You wanted, you wanted to see me on the 30th. Yeah, let me explain, Mr. Jaded. Right. Okay, right. you phoned me for the first time. Isn't that so? Some time ago. You know, some time ago, and you said you, 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 you were going somewhere, perhaps France. Right, right, France? right, right, right. Possible, yes. Yeah, okay. possible. And possible. you said you would phone me when you come back. Right. It's what you did, and I, I, I took your phone number. So right. You said right. I should phone you when I'm free to come. Right, right. All right, right. right. and I did phone. Right. As I said, yeah, as I told you on Tuesday, I couldn't get through, but they said you were very busy in the middle. Oh, shame, shame. Okay. And at this stage, when you phone me again on Tuesday. Right. I said, can I come? Can I come on on the thirtieth of November? Right. Why? Right. Why did I say so? Yes. As I said, well, I mean, because of my tight schedule, you see, because of my tight schedule as a student. And well, I wanted. Well, you studying at the university. At the technical, and I wanted to get more time, you know, to sit down and have a chat. No, not necessarily sit down and have a chat. I mean, to. To learn more about your religion. Lovely, lovely. Yeah, to lovely. To learn more about your religion. So but now, how will you be able to come to Verulam to give me a course? You hear in Bible study. You hear, Mr. Jee. No, 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 no. When you are writing, you didn't know I was here. If I was here, why write to Verulam? Yeah. You specially went out of your way to write to Verulam. Yeah, because. So you know now what you're bargaining for. Yeah, because I believe that even if I cannot do it personally. But others can do it. What guarantees? What guarantee have you got that I others can that do it? I guarantee that because there, there is a local congregation in Verulam. I know that of us witnesses. And you think you can arrange that for me? I can arrange that. Right. Okay. Right. Right. I can arrange that. Mm-hmm. Right. Now you say here. May can I show you something, perhaps? Yes. 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 Because we we have this study aids. Uh-huh. Let me have a look. Okay. And you can live forever in paradise on earth. Yes. Yeah, that's what you use, and the other one is men can't search for God. Ah, uh, yes. I think I've seen them. I think I might have them too in my library. Yeah. Uh, so the Bible is authentic and true. Yeah. Uh, the word authentic it means of undisputed origin. That's right. Or authorship. Yes, right. That's the. Concise dictionary. I just had a look at it just now. What is authentic? I mean, I have at the back of my mind. I thought I know the word. I said, No, no. Let me make doubly sure. Yeah. It says of undisputed origin or authorship. Yes. That's authentic. Okay. Right. Now you have a Bible with you. Yes, I have. Yes. Can I have a look? It's my Bible. Ah, ah. This is. Oh, this is it. Yeah, this is it. Same as this. This is Jehovah's Witness translation. <laughs> right. Now, 
do you consider this whole Bible as inspired word of God? Yes, this is what I, I believe. Inspired word of God. Inspired word of God. You believe that? I believe. This translation. This is the translation. Yes, I know that. You believe this to be the inspired word of God? Yes, I right. Now, the Christian scholars are telling me, I'd like you to correct me. Yes. It says here, the original writings of the, of the New Testament were inspired. The original writings of the New Testament, they were, were, W-E-R-E, were. Okay. They were inspired. Where is one? Where? W E R E where? Okay. That's you, past tense. You said it is scholars. Scholars, yes. Christian yes. scholars. Christian scholars. Of the highest eminence. Okay. They say that the original writings yeah. of the New Testament were inspired. Yes, sir. They were inspired. It doesn't mean that this is inspired. Okay. So they were inspired. It's not is inspired. Yeah. They were inspired. Yes, sir. It says, no translation of these sacred writings into another language except by the original writers is inspired. Okay. You like to make a note of that? No translation of these sacred writings. Okay. You have Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, yes. for example. Yes. Right. If they were written by the original authors, they were inspired. No translation yes. into another language except by the original writers is inspired. Okay. Will you accept that? No, that means no translation except then by the original writers. The original writer Matthew didn't translate this. Yeah, I know that. Matthew didn't. Peter. Mark didn't. Luke didn't. Peter didn't. Yes, right. Paul didn't. Yes. None of them had a hand in yes. translating this book. Yes. So, your scholars say that they are, this is not inspired. Yeah, but now uh, I would like if you can just make a reference to me, whose scholars are those? Jehovah's Witness scholars. Jehovah's Witnesses. You don't accept any Tom Dick and Harry, any Jewish you. scholar? Thank you. Thank you. Jehovah's Witnesses. That's right. They say just refer to me to who are those? That you should know. See, if I give you a book, this book here. Yes. And in the preface, they tell me that. In the preface, if they tell me that, will you accept it or not? In the preface? Yes. This book? Yes. Okay, I will accept it. You'll have to. Because if you accept this book as the inspired word of God, and the people who did this job, yes. if they tell you that any translation into another language, with a Zulu, Khaza, yes. English, Afrikaans, any language, yes. any of these, this is not inspired. This is inspired. This is inspired. Will you accept that? Uh, well, I don't accept it. But it says by your own scholars. Okay. okay could you give me this Bible? Yes. Example, yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Just something from uh, the translators of, the, of this version. Right, right. What do they say? Okay. Some of, some of the things they say that the translators of this work uh -huh. who fear and love the divine author of the Holy Scriptures feel to watch him a special responsibility to transmit his thoughts and declarations as accurately as possible. As accurately as possible. As possible. They also feel a responsibility toward the Christian readers who depend upon a translation of the inspired word of the Most High God for their everlasting salvation. So now... They are talking about the inspired word of God, not that this is inspired. Read that again. Okay. See? Uh, what, what you read, what you read, Nisi, okay. what you read there, I understood from your reading okay. that this is based on the inspired word of God. Okay. May I read it again? It doesn't say, yeah, read it again. They also feel a responsibility toward the session readers. To what? Towards, toward the session readers. What readers? The searching. Or searching readers. Readers. Who, de who depend upon a translation? You see, a huh. translation upon a translation. Word of the Most High God for their everlasting salvation. If the original let me, let me have a look, let me Word of God can. Let me, let me have a look. Who is it, my son? Just point it to me. Okay. Okay. You see. All right. All right. 
they also feel a responsibility toward the searching readers who depend upon a translation of the inspired word of the Most High God upon a translation of the inspired word of the Most High God for their everlasting salvation right they depend upon a translation of the inspired word of God the translation is not inspired okay do you count this as inspired yeah but now let me uh, continue to read although it is uh, 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 it didn't say it's not inspired mm-hmm. okay even translation can give salvation can help other people to get salvation but it's not inspired you see the inspired word of God when God makes you to moves you Matthew Mark Luke and John yeah. to write a certain word for example yeah. suppose they wrote the word Holy Ghost Yeah. There was a word ghost in Greek. That's right. Yeah. You have no right to translate that as spirit. Yeah. If Matthew was dictated to, inspired, breathed into, yeah. moved by the Holy Spirit to say, right, write down the Holy Ghost, yeah. that Mary conceived by the Holy Ghost. That's right. If there was a word ghost in Greek, yes, right. and it could have a synonym, Yes, right. And now, if Matthew wrote ghost, you have no right to say spirit. Okay, thank you. Um, you I don't know whether you can, I'm sorry for, for, for asking you this question, but I think I have to. Yes, go ahead, go ahead, my son. Do you regard that version of the cure as inspired? Oh yes, no, no, not the translation. Not the translation? No. The translation is never inspired. It's never inspired. See, the actual Qur'an, the Arabic Qur'an, is inspired. It's inspired. Right. That's right. But the translation is not. You are a translator, I am a okay. translator. Do you believe that an African reader, an English reader, can gain salvation by reading that English Qur'an? Yes. 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 Right. It's what you believe. But it's, if, you, okay. if, you, if you see something, then say, now look, is this inspired word of God? Yes. Yeah. Then, when I have a look at it, so man, it can have shades of meanings, yeah. this word here, which is not in the original Arabic. Yes, the original Arabic says this, yeah. uh, this is near enough. But if you are particular, somebody else uses a different term. Yes, See? So he says, no, no, that term is preferable to this. Like in your case now, yeah. spirit is preferable to the word ghost. Yeah. Right? Okay, there I know that. So, but you can't say now, uh, this is inspired or that is inspired, because the, Christ, the, all the yeah. Orthodox Christians, they say that the King James Version is inspired. Yeah. Yes. The Roman Catholics say the Dewey Version is inspired. Yeah. Right. All these modern translators, they all say they are inspired. Yes. Yeah. But your scholars, they say, that no translation whatsoever yeah. which I agree with, but I with still, the Quran but I still have to no, no, with the Quran. a reference from you I mean whose scholars are those if you can just perhaps uh, give me a literature which says so or something of that nature see Jehovah's Witness Bible okay, the color, color, color man you know the, your color you know your color yes The new world translation of the Christian Greek scriptures. Mm-hmm. Who is this done by? Okay. Your, your kingdom translation. Who's, who's done this? Who, who is the author of this? The author of this or the translators? They're, they're translators. Who are they? Jehovah's Witnesses or Roman Catholics? Okay. They are Jehovah's Witnesses. Right. Right. So now open it. Okay. And read. Start reading the forward. Okay. Were you underlined or, or wait? No, no, I read the start from, oh, okay. from forward. Right. The original writings of the Christian Greek scriptures, commonly called the New Testament, were inspired. They were inspired, right. Uh-huh. No translation of these sacred writings into another language, except by the original writers, is inspired. Right. Full stop. Is there a full stop there? Yes. Is there a full stop there? Yes. Full stop there. Right. Right. In copying the inspired originals by hand, mm-hmm. the element of human frailty entered in. Right. And so none of the thousands of copies extant today in the original language are perfect duplicates. Right. None of them. This is not one. Yeah, that's right. None. Of those that you call original manuscripts, 
Yes, right. The so-called original manuscripts. Yes. None of them are perfect duplicates. Yes, right. And you have 24,000 of them. Yes, right. So the 24,000, they're all very. Okay. So which of them is inspired? He says, none of them. Yeah, as I see this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now you agree with that statement? Do you agree with that statement that none of them are inspired? So, from an uninspired writing, you make a translation that is still makes it worse. Yeah. Because the one Gospel of St. Matthew... Yeah, but now, the, the, the thing is, it, it is still their stand even today. Hmm? It is still their stand. Do, 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 do they still believe that even today? Because this is a 1950 translation. And this is a reversed, I and mean, this one is reversed. Continuity. No, right. In 1950, the guys who, who the committee that was there, yeah. were they inspired to write that? <coughs> were they inspired to write that? No, I mean the, the translators themselves. Right. Were they inspired? So they're not inspired. No, no, were they inspired? No. No. You were moved by the Holy Spirit to write this letter. Yes. You were helped by the Holy Spirit. Yes. Those translators of yours, from Greek into English, they were not helped by the Holy Spirit. You were helped to write this letter. Perhaps I can explain this. Yes, 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 explain. Okay. Perhaps I can explain it. Can you, can you, can you allow me to, to, to Your use letter? the Bible? And what is the Bible? Your? The Bible. Bible? Yeah. Which Bible? I mean, the, that version. Uh, can you even use this? Huh? Okay, let me see my letter. But you say you were helped. Yes, I was helped. In the whole letter or in portions of the letter? Were you helped in writing the whole letter or only extracts from of, of that letter? Well, I mean, the whole letter as such. I mean, I wrote the whole letter to... With the help of the Holy Spirit. To give a witness to you. No, no. And in my witness, no, 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 I wrote no. the Holy Spirit. When, when you say, no, not plays a role. You say yeah, you were yeah. actually... You know what is actually? Yeah. You know, it's an actually helped. Is it actually... Yeah. It, you know what it means. Yeah, but no, Mr. D. If you were actually helped, means yeah. uh, the Holy Spirit was guiding you okay. to quote to quote that reference chapter 1 verse 8 yes. the Holy Spirit helped you right. the Holy Spirit helped you to say look I am prepared to give you a home Bible study course yes, right. did it? did the Holy Spirit help you in that? Yes, right. Right. so from the word start from the word go the whole letter or in portions the Holy Spirit is helping you he said now write this to Mr. D. Dat yeah. oh, no, 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 don't call him Mr. D. Dat you know call him Ahmad yes, sir. now did the Holy Spirit help you to decide what you are writing or you did it on your own ok I said the Holy Spirit helped you helped me right. but now I understand I didn't say the Holy Spirit inspired me what is inspired what is inspired hmm? oh, how you? what is can I find it Look, what is inspired? Okay, now you come with a English lexicon. Mm -hmm. A dictionary. Okay, I mean dictionary. Mm -hmm. Let me make it point. Let me make my point clear here. Perhaps there are misunderstandings. Okay, let me try and, uh, and look at the, the word of the the meaning of the word inspired. Mm -hmm. But now you know that there are different dictionaries, and they can explain the way in many ways. <laughs> These people had no motives in writing what they wrote. Yeah. You see, the guy who makes up the dictionary, he's got no ulterior motives. Yes, sir. Right. According to his understanding, like authentic, he, the guy gave you. Yes, right. This right of undisputed authorship. Yes, right. So, similar now, we say, now we agree that, look, this guy had no motive. Yes. So we said, now, this is what it means. Authentic means this. So you agree. Yes. I agree. Everybody agrees. Yes. In a court of law, this is what actually happens. If you have a dispute about the meaning, he said, let's go to the dictionary. Yes, yes. Then he said, but now, there could be other words. I said, damn it all. This dictionary here, Oxford Dictionary, Collins Dictionary, those people had nothing in mind. 
regarding our dispute. That's right. When they put down those wordings. So, he said, you have to accept there's an objective explanation. Uh, inspire. To exert a stimulating or beneficial effect upon. What's the first word? To exert a stimulating. To, to, to? To exert. Exert, yes. A stimulating or beneficial effect upon. Right. Okay, a person, etc. Right. Animate or invigorate. Right. Any? Animate or Animate. invigorate. Uh -huh. right. It continues. To arouse with a particular emotion or to a particular action or to stay. Mm -hmm. To prompt or to instigate. Right. Prompt, yes. instigate, yes. help. Give rise to. Uh -huh. Pra to instigate. Help. Uh -huh. Or arouse by divine influence mm -hmm. or inspiration. Right, right, right. All these are the meanings yes, sir. of the word inspired. inspired. You see? Yes. So now, if you say that this book is inspired, yes. your authors tell us in 1950, was it 50? Yeah, it was 1950. Right. Unless they change the mind. They made a statement, and it seems very logical, okay. that unless done by the, the original author, yes. let's say Matthew wrote it in Hebrew. Yes. Well, I don't want to, I mean, to make it a kind of discussion, because, as you know, I wrote this letter. The language, well, although I'm familiar with the language, not my own language, but with the help of the Holy Spirit, man. Tell me it all. If the Holy Spirit helps you, yes. what can there be difficulty in language? It can't help you with language. That look, you're using the wrong word. It can't help you. Then how does it help you? How did the Holy Spirit help you in writing that letter? Hmm. Now, now tell me, now how did the Holy Spirit help you if not with the language? How did it help you? What did it do to you? I mean, to give witness, I mean, to you. How did it help you in giving witness? This is all that you know. Yes. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, you knew by heart. It's you know that verse. verse eight, yes. Yeah, you know that verse. Yes. So how did the Holy Spirit help you to write that verse? Okay, the Holy Spirit helped me to, to recall. How, how, how did it do that? How did it do that to you? Did it whisper it in your ears? The Holy Spirit? It's now, you know, Acts chapter 1 verse 8, Peter's was that how are you two, two Peters? How are you recording something? If you learn something, how are you recording it? It's there. The human mind, the human computer, it supplies you the answers. Yeah, so now we believe that yes. the Holy Spirit is able to call back to our memory to remind us of what we studied, of what Christ Jesus told us. So only that, or it also helps you to you frame your thoughts, to say, now how you address this man. How do you address a person? Well, we define personality. No, no. Your personality is your personality, but yes. the Holy Spirit now. Okay. How did it help you? Then the Holy Spirit tells you to address this grandfather of yours. Yes. I'm as old as your grandfather. You agree? I agree. I'm 75 years old. Yes. Right. I think the Zulus have a word, Shanipa. The Zulus? Yes. yes. Shanipa, respect for elders. Yes. Right. Do Swazis also have that? Yeah, they have. You have respect for your elders? Yes, I have respect. So, a 75-year-old man, your grandfather, yes. you address him as Dear Ahmad. Huh? Is that how you address your fathers, your grandfathers? By his first name? In English, do you do that? In English. Uh -huh. You address an old man, your grandfather, as like, you know, your, your boyfriend. Yeah, because I... Dear Ahmad. Because... Did you know me? Okay. Did you know who you were addressing? No, I didn't know that. No. That you were addressing a man that's why, that's why I twice, did. twice as old as your father. That's why I did that. But now I saw Mr. Dida today. So now, in other words, you were not helped by the Holy Spirit. See, that's what I'm trying to tell you, that you, out of your own presumptuousness, yes. contemptuously, you wrote, Dear Ahmad, which is not called for. It is uncalled for in English. You don't address a person, you are unknown person to you, by his first name. Yeah. And without saying Mr. Yeah. You don't talk to him like that. Yeah. But the Holy Spirit didn't help you. Right. That's beside the point. Now let's come to the past text. Yeah. You see, the dispute between us, yes. between the Muslim and the Christian, mm. are these two books. Yeah. 
the Quran and the Bible. Yes, right. The Christian says that the Bible is God's word. The Muslim says the Quran is God's word. Okay. Right. The Christian says that the Quran is not the word of God. If the Christian says the, the Quran is, the word is not the word of God. Okay. Right. So the Muslim says your Bible is not the word of God. You see the point of our conflict? Okay, may I ask you, Mr. Didit? No, no, no. Listen. Yeah, no, listen, no, yeah, I, listen first. I'm talking. Okay. So, you say yours is, I say mine is. Yes. You say yours is not, I say yours is not. Okay. Now, this is mere disputation. Yes. You know, like a little child, man. Uh, I'm throwing mud at you, you're throwing mud at me. So, merely disputing, uh, that's mere disputation. Okay. I say yours book is false. Yeah. You say yours is false. Yeah. You say, Mr. D, that you're going to go to hell. Yeah. The Christians, they say that. Okay. Because we haven't got the Christ. Yeah, but I think I should get your point, Mr. D. May, may I ask, the, the Muslims, they don't believe that this is the word of God. In translation or, or even the original. No, no. The whole Bible. which says, whatever this your man is telling us now, yeah about uh, no translation whatsoever done in another language. So now you believe that the translation no, no, the no, 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 no. The Even if you bring the original okay. of this, it is not the word of God. All right. Because your, your, your authors are telling us here, yeah, the latest, yes. the latest, your, one of your latest magazines, yes. they are telling us the same thing. This is Jehovah's Witness magazine. Yeah, no, this no. is not 1950. I know. This is the latest yes. one. It tells us here, To understand, remember that the manuscript of the Christian Greek scriptures that we possess today are not the originals. It's true. So they are not inspired. If they are not the originals, the originals which you call the so-called originals are not originals. Yeah. So they are not inspired. So you are depending now upon an uninspired word to prove this to be the inspired word of God. Okay. This is not 1950. This is 19, you know what day it is, is dated. Yeah, I think it, it should be 80 something. Um, 1984, yeah. copyright 1984, 84. Yes, 84. Right. So now in the 84 they tell us the same thing. Yeah. So however, most translations, even when they include God's name in the Hebrew scripture, omit it from the Christian Greek scripture, the New Testament. <laughs> so even the word of God is taken out of the so-called originals, yeah. there's not a single out of the 24,000 that yeah. the Christian world is boasting, not one has the word Jehovah in the 27 books. Yes, okay. Hmm? So how can that be an inspired word of God? If God's own name is eliminated from a work, how can that be inspired? Inspired by who? By the devil? If God himself, me, hmm, my name, Yes. Ahmad did that. Yes. If you take this name out, okay. it hurts me. It will hurt me. Right? You are cheating me now. You are going to plagiarize me. Maybe put your own name. Yes, right. right? You are a cheat. You are a robber. You are a thief. No. Yes. It will hurt me. Yes. God's own name, out of the 27 books of the New Testament, yes, 27 books, not, it does not occur even once. The word Jehovah does not occur once in 27 books. In the original, such so-called original manuscripts, so how can that be the word of God? <laughs> let's not go into that. Okay. Now, may let's let's see this. May let's I, may no, no, let's let, let me let me let uh, finish this. Okay. So I said we were just merely disputing. Yeah. I said yours is not. You say mine is not. Yes. You say I'm going to go to hell. I said you're going to go to hell. Okay. Yes. I, I, I don't want to say so. No, no. This is the commonality of the Christian world. They are telling us that we are going to go to hell because who died for our sins? Christ died for yours. Do I, do I, do you, yes, this is yours witness. Do you believe that? I believe it. Christ died. So Christ died for your sins, so you got salvation. Yes, Christ. But nobody died for my sins. So I have no salvation. That's why you want to save us. Every Christian is out to save us. See, the Jehovah's Witnesses, the seventh day, the day. How do you say nobody died for your sins? That's what our teaching is. Nobody died for our sins. Oh, Christ didn't die for your sins. Nobody died for our sins. Okay, I understand. That's our belief. 
So he said, now, he said, you're going to go to hell? He said, you're going to go to hell if you believe in such a place. The Orthodox Christians do. They believe that there is such a place as hell and we're going to go there. Yeah, we also believe that there is a place called hell and all the people go there whether they are good or bad. So, this is the... The Christians say that we are left in there because we don't believe in Christ yeah. as, as the Son of God, that He died for our sins, so we have nobody to redeem us from yeah. sins. But now, this is mere disputation. Yeah. When I tell you that the Bible is not the Word of God, I will tell you why. Yes, right. Now, let me give you a parable. You see, Jesus Christ in the New Testament, we read, that He ever spoke in parables. He yeah. ever spoke in parables. In the New Testament. Yes. yes. Jesus ever spoke in parables. Yes. You know, the prodigal son, yes. uh, the virgins, yes. uh, the, the wheat and the he pear. You know, the soul, all this. These are parables. Yes. He was trying to explain things to him. It's in parables. Yes. So let me emulate him, give you a parable. Yes. Your father and your mother, let's say they are alive. Yes, right. They're sleeping. In the middle of the night, a burglar gets in. Okay. And your father gets up and he grapples with the burglar. But your father grapples with the burglar. But the burglar is too powerful. He overpowers your father. He's sitting on his chest and strangling him to death. He's gasping for breath. Your mother comes to the rescue and she saves your father's life. Your father says, your first name, Elphius. Yes, Nephis. 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 Yes, Nephis. Nephis. Yes, Nephis. Your father says, Nephis, chop off your mother's hands. Nephis. Your, your dad tells you, yeah. my son, chop off your mother's hands. Yes, sir. So he says, Daddy, are you joking? Are you joking? So no, my son, I'm serious. He said, Daddy, have you been drinking? He said, my son, you know, we are born again Christians. We don't drink. As far as you know, look, I haven't touched that stuff since I was baptized, born again. Then, Daddy, you are crazy. If you're not drunk, then you are crazy. This woman, my mother, she gave you 40 years of endless pleasures. She gave you so many beautiful children. And now she saved your life. And you want to chop off her hands? Daddy, you are crazy. So your dad says, no, my son, I'm inspired. Say, so, Daddy, who inspires you? The devil? This is devilish. The person who saves your life, chop off his hands or her hands, is a devilish thing. He said, no, my son, I'm inspired by God. So he says, Daddy, you are crazy, and the God who inspires you is also crazy. Am I right? If this is a situation that your father tells you to chop off your mother's hands for saving his life, then your dad is crazy, and if he says he's inspired by God, then your God is also crazy. You agree with me? With the logic yeah. of this parable? Yes, I agree with you. I mean, every Hindu will agree with that. Yeah. Every Jew will agree with that. In the house of Islam, for certain types of robberies and thieveries, we say chop off the hands yeah. in Islam. For certain other kinds, we chop off his head. But this is somebody saving your life. Yeah. And you want to chop off her hands, your mother's hands, after all what she has done for you? Daddy, you are crazy. And your God is also crazy. So he says, my son, open. Open the book. Deuteronomy chapter 25. Open Deuteronomy chapter 25. Read it aloud, I want to hear. Your Bible, how it reads. And you must read 25. Uh-huh. In case men struggle to gather with one another, uh-huh. and the wife of the one has come near to deliver her husband, out, mm-hmm. not out of the hand of the one striking him, uh-huh. and she has thrust out her hand and grabbed hold of him by his privates. Uh-huh. You must then amputate her hand. Uh-huh. You, I, must feel no sorrow. Right. This woman now, she saves your father's life, and the book of God says, chop off her hands. So, this is crazy. Can this come from God? Can God be the inspirer of that nonsense? That woman who saved your father's life chop off her hands and your eyes must must not show pity for her. Now, Now, 
I want an answer from you. Can that be the word of God? Can God inspire such nonsense? I believe it. Hmm? Not what you believe. You see, no, the Hindus, no, the Hindus, no. the Hindus, they stand before a phallus and say, "This is my God." Yeah. Do you know that? The lingam. I don't know it. I don't know. Now you read, see it in the dictionary. This is the lingam. Yeah. They worship lingam. Means the phallus. Yes, it means they worship it. They worship it. Yeah. But they say, "I believe." Now, can you reason, the, the Roman Catholics, they take a piece of bread and they say this is the flesh of Jesus. They take some wine and this is the blood of Jesus. So you reason with them, he says, look man, this bread is bread and this wine is wine. The, this can't become the flesh, starch can't become protein and the wine can't become blood. Am I right? That's your reasoning with the Roman Catholic. Uh, good point, yeah. right. So the Catholic said, but you don't understand. I believe. Have you got an answer for that? He said, but I believe that the bread is turned into flesh and the wine is turned into blood. Yes, sir. But brother, he said, your senses be like that. You know, the taste of mouth tells you that this is bread, bread, biscuit, biscuit that you're eating. And the wine is tasting like wine, it's not tasting like blood. But he said, you don't understand, it's a mystery. That's what the Roman Catholic tells you. Yeah. Am I right? So you reason with him and says, no, man. Yeah, this is because I this know, like, 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 like the Trinity. But now, he said, but I believe. When a man says, I believe, faith without reason is superstition. Yeah. We want to reason. Reason, man. Bread is bread, wine is wine. Yes. Look, it tastes like it too. A lump of stone is a lump of stone. Yes. in the shape of a phallus, that thing can neither help you nor harm you. Yes. But he said, look, you don't understand. He says, for 15 years I was married, I had no children. Yes. And I offered this god of mine, this phallus, this lump of stone, some coconuts, and I've got a son at home now. But he said, uncle, somebody might have helped you out. I said, no, 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 I believe that this god of mine gave me that son. Yes. There's no answer to that. He said, but I believe that this is the word of God. This is like a silly goat, an opinionated fool. So, but I believe that the Roman Catholic said, but I believe. The three in one fellow says, I believe. This is superstition. You have to back it up with logic, reason. Yes. Give me a logical reason why your father should have your mother's hands chopped off for saving his life. Yes. Think, man, you eat food, you don't eat. We eat food, and because you eat food, you ought to have clear-cut intelligence. Yeah. Read verse 4 now. Read verse 4. Yeah, All the same. Yeah. Yeah. Read it. And the priest... No, verse 4. You must not muzzle a bull when it is threshing. You must not muzzle a bull when it, when, while it is threshing. The cord. Okay. Right. There is a comma. Right, right, right. Now, that is... Uh, there is no context there. It is by itself. Yeah. That was Beautiful. You see the Jews, yeah. they used to muzzle the ox, tie up the mouth, yes, when it's threading the corn, trying to loosen yeah. the corn. The ox knows that that is food, the corn. Yes, so while it's threading the corn, it gives a bite. It gets a cob in its mouth and it's trying to loosen the grain and a few grains it gets in the mouth and the thing falls out. So it's chews, 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 another 15 minutes, half an hour, gives another bite. The Jews have said, oh, damn it, all this ox is eating that bloody corn. Tie up the mouth. The merciful God, the compassionate God, he says, don't muzzle the ox. How much is going to eat, man? Let it eat. I can believe that this is God. He's compassionate, his kind is telling us also to be compassionate and kind to animals, them creatures. The God who is so compassionate to the ox, to the bull, yeah. is not compassionate to a human being who saves a person's life. Can it be from the same God? Can the same God be on, on, on this level? That to the ox is merciful, compassionate, yeah. and to a human being he's not. He says, feel no pity for her. Your eyes must not pity her. Yeah. Whatever she cries, I say, look my dear, I try to help you. I risk my life. He says, chop off her hands. Yeah. Now, can you imagine God talking like that? Can God say that? Well, I must be honest, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't imagine. 
Mm. Right. Now I'm going to tell you that I have just written an anthology, a book, book. on the incest in the Bible. Of, of what? Incest. Okay. You know incest? Incest. Incest, I think, is, let me try, your marriage between relatives. It's having sex yeah. with people with whom you are very closely related. Yeah, yeah. Like having sex with your mother, with your sister, with your daughter, yeah. with your daughter-in-law, with somebody else's wife or daughter. That's fornication, adultery. Very serious. In the Bible, very serious. Yeah. That the adulterer and the adulteress must be stoned to death. That's the Bible says. That. So the Bible says. The Holy Quran, the Muslim law is also hundred stripes yeah. for the adulterer and the adulteress. Very serious. It's next to murder in yeah. Islam. Yes. In its consequences, it is next to murder, adultery. Yeah. So, but if you have sex with your own mother, that's worse than having somebody else's wife or daughter. That's worse. Going out of wedlock with somebody else's yeah. wife or daughter, yeah. you know, married or unmarried, it is next to murder. Yeah. Very serious. Stone the guy to death, says the Bible, book of Leviticus. Yeah. That the adulterer and the adulteress must be stoned to death, yeah, says the book of God. But now doing with your own mother is worse. With your own sister, your daughter is worse. Do you agree? agree? That's incest. That's incest. Now, you open up Genesis chapter 19, verse 30, and read that. Genesis chapter 19, verse 30. Genesis. Genesis. 19, 30. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. right, right. Read okay. it. Read it. Uh, later, Lord went up from Zohar and began dwelling in the mountainous region. Mm -hmm. And his two daughters along with him. Right. Because he got afraid of dwelling in Zohar. Mm -hmm. So he began dwelling in a cave, he and his two daughters. Right. And the firstborn proceeded to say to the younger woman, Our father is old, and there is not a man in the land to have relations with us according to the way of the whole earth. Mm -hmm. Come. Let us give our fathers wine to drink. Uh -huh. Let us lie down with him and preserve offspring from our father. Uh -huh. So they kept giving their father wine to drink during that night. Uh -huh. Then the firstborn went in and lay down with her father. Uh -huh. But he didn't know when she lay down and when she got up. Uh -huh. It came about on the next day that the firstborn then said to the younger, Here I lay down with my father last night. Let us give him wine to drink tonight also. Then you go and lie down with him, and let us preserve offspring from our father. Uh -huh. So they repeatedly, they repeatedly gave their father wine to drink mm -hmm. during that night. Also then the younger got up and lay down with him. But he did not know when she lay down and when she got up. Right. Thus, 36. Uh -huh. And both the daughters of the Lord became pregnant from their father. Right. That's enough. That's enough. Now, you see, I don't know whether you can read this to your sister. This story about the daughters of Lot seducing the father night after night. That means the father is not having intercourse with the daughters, but the daughters are having with the father. The father is old, means he's gone cold, must not have an erection, and then he's dead drunk. Now the daughters, how are they going to collect the seed? Your sister want to know, said, brother, said, what happened here? Seed. Oh, this says here, yours is more explicit than the King James Version. He speaks about seed. Can you think the seed of the father? Yes. He's talking about offspring. Yes. That means, you know, I have to sex, I have children. Yes. Right. And thus, both the daughters of Lot will be child by the father. They became pregnant by the father. Yes. And Ammonites and the Moabites with the offsprings. And God blesses them. He blesses the Ammonites and the Moabites. When the Jews came out of Egypt, they were told to massacre the Palestinians. Men, women and children. Even animals were not to be spared. And they killed the men and the women and the sucklings and oxen and goats and sheep and even the donkeys. The Jews killed. But the Ammonites and the Moabites, the Bible says, God says them, do not harass them because they are the children of Lot. They are a blessed people. Father having intercourse with his daughters and begetting bastard children, children of incest, they are to be protected in the word of God. 
But the Palestinians kill them all. Even sucklings. You know suckling? Maybe at the breast. Kill them. kill them also. And they killed. At the command of God, they killed men, women and children and even sucklings were killed. Them, including donkeys were killed. By the merciful God, telling you to go and kill donkeys also? For what sins? What sins did the donkeys commit? Okay. Huh? Now, I am asking what is the moral of this? You see, we tell children fairy tales. Yeah. The fox and the grapes. You heard about the fox and the grapes. Yeah. That hungry fox. Yeah. You know, he sees a bunch of grapes. So he's jumping for the grapes, but can't reach it. And jumps again and again until he's tired. So the fox says, sour grapes. You heard that before? Okay. okay. Yes. Maybe you, you forgot. Just when I said, the fox and the grapes. Yeah. No fox jumps for grapes. You'll go for your chicken, you'll go for my duck. Yeah. But not for grapes. This is our way of telling the child. I said, look, don't be like that greedy fox, my child. When you can't get a thing, you say sour grapes. You know, the thing is rubbish, garbage, because you can't get it. Yeah. Don't talk like that. The dog in his shadow. The dog finds a bone. With the bone in his mouth, is crossing a wooden bridge yeah. across the river. He sees his reflection in the water. So he sees another dog with a bone in his mouth. He doesn't know about the reflection. Yeah. So he's greedy for the other dog's bone. So he's a bone. So he lost what he had. Yeah. The moral is, look my child, don't be greedy for the other dog's bone. You're greedy for that, what God has given you, you're going to lose that as well. Yeah. Right? That's a moral. Yeah. We tell our children fairy tales, fables. These things didn't happen. Yeah. You know, no dog. <laughs> yeah, but they contain moral lessons. Right, right, right. The wolf and the lamb, moral lesson. Yeah. These are the fables we are telling, created. We invented them yeah. to teach a moral, a lesson. Now, whatever you read, it has an effect on your mind. Our South African government has been very good against pornography. Against pornography. There are things I can buy from Heathrow Airport, from Kennedy Airport, and I bring those magazines here, I can go to jail for two years. Yeah. Up to lately, it was so strict. I don't know, things are softening up now. Yeah. But now, they were very particular. Why? I said, look, I'm a mature man. I can do what I like. You know, it can't do anything to me. He said, no, no. It's an evil influence. Yeah. You go to jail for two years. Yes, because it is going to have effect. I show it to your sister, I show your daughter, I show your wife. Yeah. You know those pornographic pictures, you know. Yeah. It is going to have effect on her. If I come and show your mother, it's going to have effect on her. And if you see me, or your father sees me, he has a right to kill me. Yeah. Right? This is not that. What are you trying to do? You know, what are you trying to insinuate? Yeah. Because now I am showing that, he's trying to feel her reactions. Yeah. Right? So I want to exploit her. So he says, no, 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 you don't do that to my sister, you don't do it to my wife. You know, I visited your home, I was talking about God and religion, and I opened a book of pornography, and I'm trying to show her the pictures. And if you came up, uh, came in at the time, he said, Uncle, what are you doing? Huh? You are a man of God, a bloody rubbish, you know, get out! If you don't kick me or punch me, at least he said, get out of the house, and don't darken my door again. Because it's an evil influence. So, Dr. Vernon Jones, an American psychologist of great repute, he carried out experiments on groups of school children to whom certain stories will be read. And he said that these stories made certain slight but permanent changes in character, even in the narrow classroom situation. Yeah. Like we have been taught history in South Africa. The name of the book, the history book, when I was in Standard One, was Our Country, South Africa. Yeah. Our Country, the title of the book yeah. was Our Country. But now, everything I'm reading is from the white man's point of view. And I believed it. Yeah. That's his country. Yeah. And he's like, you know, don't give them peace. <laughs> they yeah. don't want to work. They, yes. they have to get the import the coolies from India and from China. So, now, this is what they're programming me with. And I, it took a long, long time, man, for that damn thing to go off. Because now, programming childhood is, you know, this is a white man's country. This is a white man's country. Yeah. I didn't know that it belongs to the, uh, the yeah. Africans. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. This is our, that's the title of the book is Our Country. And that our there is not me. Yeah. It's the white man. Right. right. So, programming. The type of stories you tell children. Suppose in the story you tell always about the African, you know, he's a lowdown fellow, he's a bloody thief, he's like this, he's like that, shh. The children as they grow up, every African they see things, the bloody cutthroat is a bloody thief. He said, program, program. So he said, these stories, on the same 
uh, education group, an uh, age group, as a result, standard two children. That's also another standard two children. You tell this standard two children the story of St. George, the gallant St. George, how he slew the dragon. You know, you saw this and whatever it is, and he killed this dragon. The other group, you tell the same St. George, the name is the same, but, you know, he sees a lizard and he ran home and crying in his mother's laps, or he saw something else and he ran up the tree and is howling for his father. Actually, in real life, this is how the children will behave. That type of thing. They are really, really, they have that type of mentality. Yeah. The one says, no man, he saw a snake and he looked for something around, looked for a stick, wouldn't find it, he found a stone and he smashed it on the head. His program. Something happens like that in real life, you start looking for a stick or a stone, that's what he's going to do. The other one, you keep on telling him about running away, running away. Shh. You think of nothing but running away. So he says, he carried out experiments on groups of school children to whom certain stories were being read. And he said, these stories made certain slight but permanent changes in character, even in the narrow classroom situation, even the little things. So now you read, father cohabiting with his daughters. Yes, sir. Then Genesis chapter 35, verse 22, you don't have to open it. It speaks about Reuben, the eldest son of Jacob, Israel. He goes in cohabiting with his mother. In common language, he fucks his own mother, the bastard. And Israel heard it. People told Israel, he said, your son, he schooled his wife. And he didn't school the fellow, he didn't spank the fellow, and God didn't give him AIDS, syphilis, or gonorrhea. Nothing. Then, still Genesis, chapter 8, 38, speaks about Judah, the father of the Jewish race. Yeah. He's going to Timnath to share a sheep, and he sees a woman sitting by the roadside. He thinks she's a harlot, a whore. So he comes up to her and he says, allow me to come in and to thee. Please, I beg you, let me have sex with you. So she said, what will you give me? Sex with you. So she said, what will you give me? Teaching your daughter's prostitution. This is prostitution. No, sir, full facts. God will punish you, you go to hell. <laughs> what will you give me? He has intercourse with his daughter-in-law. And because master children. Prince. Fathers and Sarah. And he's blessed. He's blessed. He's become the great grandfather of Jesus Christ in the genealogy. What's the moral? Where does that fit in? Into this book of God. Is that your doctrine? No. Hmm? Is that is that your is that reproof? What's the reproof? Was he punished? No. He was blessed. He's honored. Is that your instruction in your righteousness? Yeah, but I, sh I should say that we don't have the right to question God's authority. We don't know why God did that. Yeah, yeah, God, no, no, no. His is Judah, he is his daughter-in-law. If God didn't tell him to go, did he? If God told her, so look, in his wisdom he knows. If God told Lot to go, he said, look, God knows his wives. If, if Reuben, wife, her mother, by God telling him, go and do that, we can say, look, if God said such a thing, what can I, how can I question Him? Yeah, and before... But each and every one of them, yeah. they are doing it surreptitiously. Mm. You see? Yeah. So in other words, now they knew they were doing wrong. Yeah. But God didn't punish them. Okay. But Onan is punished, Er is punished. Okay. But the father-in-law, his daughter-in-law, yeah. and producing children, he's, he's blessed. Yeah. So where does that fit in into the book of God? Okay, before I even will answer that, can we please come to the point we stated it? As the Bible as it is, do you believe that the whole of it is not the word of God or there are parts in the Bible that are word of God? Yes. That's what I want to yes. say. We believe that in the Bible, yeah. there are four types of evidences. That's right. One is, I said there is a word of God in the Bible. Yeah. The word of God is there. That's right. To give you an example, as in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18, yeah, we have right. been dealing with that. Yeah, there, God says, I will raise them up a prophet. Yes, right. Who is this I? Who is a God? It's God. Yeah. And I will put my words in his mouth. Who is this I and my God? Yeah. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Who is this I? God. The so Jew says he's God. The Christians say he's God. And I say he's God. Yeah. So we are agreed. That's the word of God. Yes, right. In the book of Isaiah we read, Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. Who's talking? 
course. Go on, go on. Okay. Although the words we hear are from the mouths of Isaiah. Yeah. When he said, I, I am God, out of human habit we have a tendency. Yeah. You know, when you're quoting the devil, said the yeah. devil said, you know, I am the, uh, the, the God of this world. I am the God of this world. The devil said that. Yeah. But when you say, I am the God of this world, you can beat your chest. But yeah. I understand it's not you. You're not claiming to be. See, you're only quoting. Yeah, that's right. So Isaiah the prophet, he said, I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is no savior besides me. Yes, Who is talking? God is talking. God is talking through the mouth of right. his prophet Isaiah. Right. 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 So we have no hesitation. Yes. See there are verses like that in the Bible. I can show you hundreds. You know them. I know them like that the last book of the Bible, Revelation, God said to John write and John wrote all what God said. Yes. Now you will say that this is what John tells you now. He says, as John said, yeah. that God told him to write. We don't know whether he was told or not. That's all debatable. But now, when I'm quoting you, he said, I, I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. We said, these are the word of God. No questions. Written by, I mean, let, let, right, by, let, let, by, let, by mouthpiece. Point where, written by Moses. Moses whoever, said, whoever, whoever, whoever. You will raise a prophet. Right, 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 right. Okay. But who's so this he, I? No, no, who's the I there? It's God. Not Moses. It's God who says it. Not Moses. That's right. So he said, now there's no hesitation. Yeah, even God say in, in the last book of the Bible, I'm making all things new. Who say that is God? You say. Right. So he says, now there are common grounds between the Jew, the Christian, and the Muslim. And these verses, you know, this is God's word. The Christian says that, the Jew says that, and the Muslim says that. Yeah. So there's no dispute. Common grounds. Yeah. Then there's another type of evidence. For example, like Jesus said, it has been said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her, had committed adultery with her already in his heart. So who said that? He said Jesus. Right? So these are the words of a prophet of God. Again, he said, it has been said by them of old time, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, I say unto you, this is not evil. He who strikes you in the right cheek, him that. So whose words are they? They are the words of the prophet of God. So we believe in the word of God, yeah. and we believe there's the word of the prophet of God. Then we have a third type of evidence, all in the Bible. Yes. Where it says, while he was going forth into the way, who Jesus, he saw a tax collector called Matthew. Yeah. Yes. Matthew 9.9. 9. And he came up to him, Matthew, and said unto him, Matthew, follow me, Jesus. And he, Matthew, followed him, Jesus. We say, these are not the words of God, these are not the words of Jesus, and these are not the words of Matthew. If Matthew was, Jesus was writing, say, while well, I was going forth into the way, I saw a tax collector called Matthew, I went up to him and told him to follow me, and he followed me. That's Jesus. If Matthew said, well, say, while he was going forth into the way, Jesus, you know, he came up to me and asked me to follow him, and I followed him. That's Matthew writing. Nor did God write that. Okay. So we said these are the words of an eyewitness, okay, or a ear witness, or somebody writing from hearsay. Yeah. These are not the words of God, these are from our point of view. These are not the words of the prophet, these are not the words of the disciple Matthew, but these are words of some eyewitness, or ear witness, or somebody, just whatever he heard is created the thing. Yeah. Then there is another type of evidence, what I'm quoting you now. Not having intercourse with his daughters. See, it fits in. Son cohabiting with his mother, father in law with his daughter in law. Then one of the sons of David, Amnon, he goes and rapes his sister. And the father didn't scold him, didn't spank him. Another son of David, on the palace roof in the absence of the father, he puts up a tent. And he gathers all his father's wives, ten of them. And he AK 47, ten of them in a row, in the sight of the whole of Israel. Now, you see, that type of thing doesn't fit in, it fits into pornography of the highest order. You know, the son, the mother's wholesale, 10 in a row, AK-47, drilling them all in the sight of the whole of Israel to show his father a point. He wants to show his father a point in his absence. I said, now, this doesn't fit the book of God. Yes. So we Muslims, we said, look, we also have things like that in the house of Islam. We have the word of God separate book, the Quran. Yeah. Then we have the words of the Prophet, separate book, called the books of Hadith, traditions. 
Then we have the workings of our, our historians, philosophers. A separate book. This is separate. Word of God separate. Word of the Prophet separate. Word of the historian separate. And pornography also we have. Yeah. But this is not in the book. Okay. The word of the Prophet is not in the book. The word of the historian is not in the book. The so pornography is not in the book. So now but I, in your case, you got everything in one book. Now, so if I get you, all of this written in the Holy Quran is the Word of God. Right. All, all, right. Right. all, all, all. all right. right. May I ask you, may Yes, 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 please. So what do you think about the, this words of Jesus Christ? The words of, uh, you, you believe that is a prophet of God. Yes, yes. So what do you think about, what, what do you, you think about his words? What, which one? Although I, I, will, I would like to read it, like, because I think it will be... Uh, okay, okay, now read it. Read it, my son. Jesus said to him, I am, the, he, he, he said that to Thomas, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Beautiful. Right, I accept that. Except. That's what he told to Thomas. Yes. Now, I'm asking. Close the book. Close the book. I'm asking you, what is the context? You see, you quoted something, now. Huh? That means you have an idea. Yeah, the idea. Like when I quoted you. Yeah, because... Uh, when I quoted you about... First of all, first of all, he said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Uh, that's beautiful, one and two. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Right, 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 right. You know, he, he, I'm going to prepare a place yeah, for you. Because the, the night before he was impaled. <coughs> so now, Thomas asked him, where are you going? Right. So now, Christ Jesus says, you, you can, where I go, you cannot know. And, and he said to him, I'm the truth, the way, and the life. Beautiful. No one comes to my father except by me. True. So now for us to have a, a closer relationship with God, right. we should do so through Christ right. Jesus. Right. He's the way, right. the truth, and the life. Now let's see now. The Listen now, I give you my, my, my view of that. Yeah. You are the first Christian I have come across yeah. who knows the context. I must congratulate you for that. You see? Because people just quote. Jesus said, I am a father of one. So I'm asking, what is the context? The guy wants to open the book. I said, Go on, man. You quoted the verse, I want you to give me the context. In what sense? Because if you're quoting, you must know what you're quoting about, what the whole thing is, the story is about. So now here, yes, exactly as you said. Jesus is telling the disciple, I'm going to prepare a place for you. In my father's house there are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. They misunderstood. The disciples misunderstood. They said, Master, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus is talking about spiritual matters. They are thinking of geographical locations. Yeah. Are they going to Bethlehem or Galilee? Or where? We are not. We don't know where you are going. How can you know the way? In answer to that, he says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. In other words, he's telling them that where I am going, the way to God is personified in me. Look at me. The way I am going, if you follow me, you will reach there. The truth of God is personified in me. Real life is personified in me. Look at me. The way I am going, you go, you will reach that destination. Not geography. It's too heavy for them. It's too heavy for them. Yeah. It's too heavy. What is telling them? I am the way, the truth and the life. No man. They can't grasp that. Yeah. They are always misunderstanding everything. Look again and again Jesus says, Ye of little faith, ye of little faith. How many times? Dozens of times in the New Testament. Yeah. And he's explaining to them as if explaining to little children. And they can't seem to grasp. So he said, I even yet without understanding. Yet. Time to, what's wrong with you guys, man? You know, time is at, at a premium. You know, things are coming to an end. And I want to help you. I want to teach you. And tell me told you, you're not listening. You're not understanding. And when he's provoked further, he says, Oh, faithless and perverse generation. He's talking to his disciples. How long shall I be with you? How long shall I be with you? I said, if he was a Japanese, since he was a Jew, he would have committed that honorable harakiri, suicide. Man, he, can't, he can either afford to do that. Everything he's talking, the misunderstanding. So he says, I am the way, the truth. And the first is, he said, where I'm going, come, come, follow me, man. See, look at me. You see me, you follow me, you will reach where I'm going. It's too heavy. So they said, show us the Father. And it suffices us. Let's yeah. show us God, man. All this you're talking, fancy talk, too heavy you know, for us. Yeah. 
Just she was God and give satisfaction. So Jesus says, Philip, you have been with me for so long. Yeah. You as a Jew, you have to know better than that. The scripture says, God is not seen at any time. No man can see God and live. And you, as a Jew, and my disciple for three years, then we tell you have learned nothing. You still want to see God with your bodily eyes when you can't even look at the sun. Hmm? You want to see God? If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Means if you understood me, you would have understood what God is. If you understood me, you will understand what God is. You won't make such a silly request. So, I said, that there is an all seas of un uh, misunderstanding. He is the way to God. For who? For the Jews. He's telling them, follow me. He is the Messiah. He's come to reform them, reclaim them from the formalism, from the ceremonialism, from the hypocrisies. He wants to save them. But he didn't say that he is the only way to God. See, every prophet of God, we believe, in their own time, in their own dispensation, they are the way to God. In the time of Abraham. Yeah. If you were living and me, we have to follow him. If you want to be in God's good news. In the time of Noah, you have to listen to him. In the time of Lot, you have to listen to him. In the time of Moses, you listen to him. In the time of David, you listen to him. Each and every prophet of God, in his time, in his dispensation, he is the way to God. But, Jesus Christ, he says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. How be? When he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. I have so many things to say unto you, yeah. but you haven't got the bloody capacity. Yeah. So he's promising you somebody other than himself, yeah. that he will guide you into all truth. Yeah. For he shall not speak from himself, yeah. but what things shall he hear, that shall he speak. And he shall declare unto you the things that are to come, he yes. shall glorify me. Yeah, may I, may I interrupt you yes. yes, my son. As he said, no one can come to my father except through me. Yes, he's telling who? He's telling who? He's telling Thomas. Right, right. So he's telling a Jew. He said the, Jew, the Jews of his time, there was no way for them. They had to listen to him. But in the time of Moses, they had to listen to Moses. In the time of David, not Jesus. In the time of Muhammad, you listen to Muhammad. See, every prophet of God, he is the mouthpiece of God. He is the firstborn of God. Yeah. And in that person's life, yeah. you have to listen to him. Yeah. If you want to be on the right side with God. Okay, thank you. So, this is what my understanding is, yeah. that he's telling the Jews, look, all, all the Jews, besides he's telling the uh, Thomas and the disciples, he's telling the whole of Jewry that you have to listen to him. He is the mouthpiece of God. Now, from now on, while he is there, you listen to him. But I've got many more things to tell you. Yeah. The problems of race, yeah. the problem of alcoholism, yeah. the problem of surplus women. Yeah. I've got, no I got no time to tell you all this. So now what Mr. D. Dutt says that Jesus was a, was a prophet to the, to the Jews. Right. Right. He's, telling, he's telling us, he said, I'm not sent. I'm not sent, but under the lordship of the house of Israel. He said, go ye not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. But go ye rather unto the lordship of the house of Israel. Is it not the, Jesus who said, go and make all the people disciples? Uh, now, when did he say that? Look, all his life, his no, no, all, right, before right, his right, 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 right. Now, this is what they call, this is the word they use, a, 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 a prophecy after the event. You see, most of these Bibles, some of, I'm sorry, some of them, they have what is called the Red Letter Bible. Yeah, 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 yeah. so a lot of... Now, red letter means everything that Jesus is supposed to have spoken, they are in red. Yeah. Now, that red letter Bible, I mean, not done by the Muslims, done by the Christians. You find 90% is black. 90% of the New Testament is all black. Yeah. That means not the word of Jesus even. Leave out the word of God, it's not even the words of Jesus. Yeah. How much? 90%. I might have it here if you want to have a look. Ninety percent of the red letter Bible is black. <coughs> then out of the ten percent that is in red, Christian scholar says, this is not Jesus couldn't have uttered this. Jesus couldn't have uttered that. Again, more than fifty percent is taken out. In other words, the records were not kept. Nobody wrote. Jesus Christ in his lifetime, he never wrote a word. Nor did he instruct anybody to write a word. 
and not a word was written in his lifetime. Not a word was written in his lifetime. May I say something? Yes, my son. Okay, Jesus Christ said that they should be his witnesses. Right, 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 right. So now they were but they didn't write. Huh? So they have huh? to they have to write. No, no. To. They didn't write. Your you you ask your your authorities. The earliest manuscript that you have. There are three to four hundred year old. The earliest, the the most ancient that you have, that is in your possession, are three to four hundred years after Jesus. Yeah, and these are copies of copies of copies. Because what I know there are no well there are no originals. There's no even any original single original manuscript. And these are copies of copies of copies. And uh, yeah, in good faith, in good faith, they are telling us, your scholars are telling us, that you see, in copying by hand, the, the frailty, the human frailty entered in. Yeah. And so, you know, in other words, the people, each and every one had his own ideas. Everything happened after the Nicene Creed. The scriptures that you have are after the Nicene Creed. All the manuscripts that you have. The 325, after 325, okay. all the manuscripts are dated after that. That means they were colored with this Trinitarian uh, idea. Yeah. So they, shh, they started pushing in, started pushing in, and now you have to untangle this. The Jehovah's Witnesses are huh? doing a very faithful job, a beautiful job, with regards to the Trinity. You know, you are the strongest in your opposition to the Trinity. But you know, this, this word Trinity is not in any Bible on earth. Did you know that? I know. Right. But the word Trinity is in the Quran. Did you know that? Oh, yes, I know that. Right. What does it say? When it says Trinity. Oh, that can, I cannot no, 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 say no, 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 that. It says you should not say Trinity. Yeah. Beautiful. Yes. You know, just don't believe in it. Yes. Says, so don't say Trinity. This is puppet, it'll be better for you. For your God is one God. He's not three in one. Now, long before Russell and who state, you know, long before the Jehovah's Witness movement came into being, you know, officially as a body, this book for fourteen hundred years is telling you, don't say Trinity. Stop it! It'll be better for you. Yeah. It says Jesus is not God. By the way, the yeah. Holy Quran was written after that. Oh, okay. 600, 600 years after Jesus. Yeah, it's 600 after years after. Well, the Christians were teaching Trinity by right, right, okay. right. Okay. They were teaching Trinity. So God Almighty didn't wait for 2,000 years for Russell and who's that? Tate, who's that? No. Yeah. No, 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 it's early, Charles Chase Russell and after that Russell, Russell, the president Russell, became Russell and Rutherford. Russell and Rutherford. Yeah. Russell and Rutherford. Before they started this movement, about against the Trinity, but for 1400 years, this book is telling you, don't say Trinity. They say, Jesus is God. This book says, Lakat kafar Anyone who said that Jesus Christ, the son of Mary, is God, is blaspheming. He's an act of treason against Allah, against God. Waqal al but the Messiah said, Christ said, Ya Bani Israel, O children of Israel, La'budullah, worship Allah. God Almighty, Rabbi wa Rabbukum, who is my Lord and your Lord. Inna hu man yushrik billah, whoever will associate anyone with Allah, with God. Fakad harram Allah lil jannah, God will forbid him paradise. Wa ma'wa naar, and the fire of hell will be the dwelling place. Wa ma lil zalimina min ansar, and for the wrongdoers there will be no one to help. 1400 years ago, this yes. teaching, what you are teaching today, yes. that Jesus is not God, this book condemned it in the strongest terms. Yes, but it's true that even the Bible, even before the, the, the Holy Quran was written, right. the Bible condemned it, even before the Quran was written. Now, where, where, where does it say, don't say Trinity? Where? In the Bible? Well, where? There is not a single text. As I believe, there is no word Trinity. But here, here the word is there, the word Trinity is there, but it's telling you don't, or do you believe in that? Tell me, Mr. Jeter, how did you come to an explanation that the Trinity is not a Bible teaching? Maybe research. You research that, look, there was a con conflict from the very beginning among the Christians, early Christians, in the year 325, uh, the uh, council is Nisi, hmm? that they, they officially, you know, they voted democratically, they made Jesus into a God. But there, there was a dispute among the bishops. Yeah, I, I remember yeah. others like Ar Ar Arius, 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 Arius. Arius. So, the, the, the people they, as a whole, they were yeah. not Trinitarians from the beginning. Yeah. They were not Trinitarians. So the thing was there, but now this was overtaken. Trinitarianism was taken over. Yeah. Now what is the position of the Muslims? God Almighty tells us, the Trinity 
is a fabricate, is a false, falsity. Jesus being God is a blasphemy. Yes. So in other words, this thing is doing the job. For 1400 years, that book is doing the job and there's not a single Muslim who believes in the Trinity. There's not a single Muslim who believes that Jesus is God. In other words, we are with you. In that, we are going together. Yeah, but now, the difference is there. I don't know what you believe about Jesus. Because if you we say, we say, we say, Jesus, Jesus is a prophet. We say he was one of the mightiest messengers of God. One of the mightiest messengers. Mightiest of them all. No, no, no. no. One of the mightiest. Yeah. One of them. You see, now we follow the advice of Jesus. He says, judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment he judged, he shall be judged. And with what measure he meet, he shall be measured unto you. So he said, now we are not to sit in judgment upon the prophets of God. He said, now between Moses and Jesus, who was more acceptable in the sight of God? I said, that's not your department. This is not your business, not my business. In the sight of God, which of his ministers he loves most or who is most valuable, leave it to them. Leave it to Mandela when he gets his cabinet. Leave it to Dick Clark in his cabinet. You are not to say, you know, that the foreign affairs minister, he is the, the most important guy. That's not your business. That's not my business. In the sight of God, whom he loves most, who he evaluates most, we are told in the Quran, we are not to discriminate between the messengers of God. They are all the servants of God. They came to do a job. Love them, respect them, revere them, follow them, but don't worship any one of them. That is, in a nutshell, the Islamic teaching is love them, respect them, revere them, follow them, but worship none of them. Right? Not even Muhammad. Yeah. Not even... We say, no, 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 Jesus is not the Son of God, but Muhammad is. We say, no such nonsense. The Christ didn't die for anybody's sins, but Muhammad died for your sins. We say, no such nonsense. We say, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Your book says, the son shall not be the iniquity of the father. Father Adam said, his sons, we are not responsible for what he did. He paid the full price. He paid more than the price due from any person for making a mistake. Yeah. Neither shall the father be the evil. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. Anything good thing the good man does, he will get his fruits, his rewards. And the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. You do wrong, you pay for it. But if the wicked will turn, he's repent from the all, all the sin that is committed and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. He said, that is Islam. You know, I quoted the biblical verse to say, that is Islam. Yes. You know, that you are responsible for your actions, I am responsible for mine. Nobody pays for your sins, nobody pays for mine. Stand up for your own. So, you said, and this is biblical. This is biblical. This is nothing new. Islam is not teaching you anything new. Yeah. But now with regards to this man, Jesus, what does this book say? I don't know. Have you, have you got a Quran? No, I haven't got it. But uh, the thing is, I used to have my, uh, mine is at home, you know. Where home? In my Swaziland? Home is in, you know, in Swaziland. It's in Pretoria. So I'm good, you know. Right, right, right. So I have a Quran at home. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll show you here. In it's just similar to that one. I think yes. it's... But it's I put it in, in one of the bookshops. This is the index, it tells you, about Jesus. Yes. Okay, Jesus, a righteous prophet. He's a true prophet of God. Chapter 6, verse 85. That's what the Quran says about Jesus. He's a, chapter 6, verse 85. No, if you like, I give you a photo set of this. I give you a photo set of this. Two pages of the index. Yeah, but it tells doesn't you. matter because, as I said, oh, he's going uh, home. Oh, right, right, right. So he's a righteous prophet. 685. Right. His birth is described in two places. His birth. Yeah. Chapter 3, verses 45 onwards, and chapter 19, verses 22 onwards. His apostle to Israel, his disciples, taken up like Adam, not crucified, no more than apostle, not God, sent with gospel, not son of God, physically, physically, you know, biologically, he's not the son of God. No. Metaphorically, we are all the children of God. No. Yes, yes, my what, what Christ meant when he said, when, because Christ himself said that he is the son of God. Right, 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 right. No, right, 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 right. In the same sense that he meant that the others are sons of God. You see, when he said, you know, when the Jews picked up stones again to stone him. Yeah, Then he said, I am the father of one. Yeah, I remember. Right. Jesus says, many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of those works do you stone me? So they say, for the good work we stone thee not. 
but for blasphemy. Yes. Because the thou being a man makes us that's a God. Yes. That's why the Christian will say, look, he was not blaspheming because he was God and he was entitled to. Yes. So that's not blasphemy. The Jews say you are blaspheming. What is the answer Jesus gives? He says, he, says, he, says, he says, is it not written in your law? He is uh, insulting us. It's also his law. But is it not written in your law? In your book, man, like I'm say, I got the Bible also. You see, in my Bible also. Is it not written in your Bible? You know, he says, there, man, come on, come on, have a look. Is it not written in your law? The Hebrew word for law is Torah. See, it is not written in your Torah, it is not written in your law. I said, ye are gods. If he, God Almighty, called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, is quoting from the 82nd Psalm. He says, behold, ye are gods, and all of you are the children of the Most High. God is calling them gods. With a small g. Yeah. But there is no small g in Hebrew and Greek. Yeah. There is no such thing. There is no such thing. Yeah. So now, he said, is it not written in your law, ye are gods? And all of you, the children of the Most High. In the book of Exodus, God speaks to Moses and he says, Behold, I have made you a God to Pharaoh, yeah. and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Yeah. So, this is our language, man. We talk like that. Nkosi, Nkosi. You know, yeah. you talk about God Nkosi, Nkosi Botelezi. Huh? You don't mean God Botelezi, yeah. but you use the word. That's your language. Nkosi. Yeah. Chief, Chief. Chief. But God Almighty is using Nkosi, you know. God Almighty is not the chief Pesulu. Yeah. You don't mean that, you mean God. So now this is our language. Suppose you call him Nkosi and you call myself Nkosan. Yeah. You don't mean I'm your God, but you yeah. call God also Nkos yeah. So he said, is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods. If yeah. he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came in the prophets, are called gods in your book. See of him whom the Father sanctified and sent into the world, that thou blasphemest, because I said I'm the Son of God. This is a lesser expression. If others are called God and you find no fault with that, why are you finding fault with me when I say I'm the son of God? When God has got sons by the tons. See, in the Bible, he's got by the tons. Genesis chapter 6 verse 3. He says, and the sons of God saw the daughters of men. Yeah. Yeah, hmm? right, yeah. How many? In the plural, many. No, he says, I mean the Bible says sons. And when the sons of God of Luke say Adam, the son, son of God. God. Right. And when the sons of God came in and had sex with the daughters of men and bore children to them, they became great men of all men of renown. How many did he have? In the Hebrew Bible. Many. Yes. Then in the book of Exodus, God says, He says, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. In the book of Jeremiah, He says, Ephraim is my son, even my firstborn. In the book of Psalms, He speaks to David. He says, I will declare a decree unto thee, that thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Then in the New Testament, we are told, as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Every Tom, Dick and Harry. If you follow the rule and plan of God, you are a godly person. In the language of the Jew, in the idiom of the Jew, you say you are a son of God. Jesus telling the Jews, say you are of your father the devil. Why? Did they look devilish? Did they have sharp ears, horns? Huh? No. Doing the work of their father. Right. So in other words, if you do devilish things, your father is the devil. If you do godly things, your father is God. It's a metaphorical statement in the language of the Jew. And you find a fault with me when I say I am the son of God? How many sons did he have? By the tons in your book. He said, in your book, man, this, by the tons there. And others are calling even God in your book. And then you, know, you don't find fault with that, and you're finding fault with me, that means now you're just looking for trouble. Where does he say he's exclusively God's son? No way. No way. Remember, no remember in, I think it's Matthew 16 or something. Mm, what they say? Well, he asked his disciples. Who do you think that you are? Yeah. You are Messiah, the son, of, the son of the living God. Yeah. Peter said, You are Christ, the right. son of the living right. God. Right, 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 right. right. So, did, did you no. object or? No, 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 right, right. No, 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 no objection. Yeah. See, at, the trial, at the trial also. Sat down the son of the He said, Yes. Thou sayest, you know, I, I am. In other words, in the language that we are talking, I said, Mr. Dida, are you in course here? We are talking Zulu. I said, well, I'm in course, Lama. I'm a course here. Yes. But I'm not claiming divinity. I'm not claiming to be God. Yes, right. In your language now, in course, he means the chief. I'm the chief of this place. Yes. So I have a right to say yes. But now, if you look at so you see, he did it. He said it. Tear in the clothes, you know, just to demonstrate that. He deserves to be dead. 
No, that is when you're looking for trouble in the man, you find it. But now, this man, Jesus, he didn't blaspheme. See, God has got sons by the tons in the Bible, yes. and in that sense, metaphorically, yes. we say, we are all the children of God. Yes, sir. Like the good and the bad. Yes. See, Judas Iscariot was also in the group. Yes. They are all sons of God, the good and the bad. Yes. But now, Jesus would be more, more qualified to be called the Son of God yes. than any one of us, because he will be more faithful to God than any of us can ever be. From yes. that point of view, he is preeminently the Son of God. Yes. But the Christian says, Jesus is the only begotten Son. Begotten, not made. So, the book of John 1 verse 1, you know that it has mistaken. No, no, it says begotten. The beginning. No, no, no. Right, 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 right. But now, the word was a God, and the word with the God, and the word was a God. Right, right, right. John three sixteen is what Christ said. Right. To Nicodemus. Right. That God loved the word that He gave it His only begotten. Right. Now, now, let's catch that. Is that in your Jehovah's Witness Bible? Three sixteen. Yes. Begotten. The word begotten is there. Yes, right. Please check it out. Please check it out. Your small journey. Journey. No, no, no. Something like this. No, no. John 316. No, no. Yes, yes, 316. Yes. Yes. Because this is in the, in the King James Version. Yes. It is there. The King James Version is there. I was just only begotten. Right. Okay. I'm satisfied. Now, now, that word begotten. You see, your, your author told you that people have been translating the Bible according to their own preconceived notions. Yes. So, you know, inadvertently or advertently, things crept in according to your beliefs. Mrs. Ellen G. White, she says the same thing. Oh, yes, Ellen G. White, all these seven days. She makes a that how did things happen, what happened. So, now, this is a revised standard version. Okay. Now, who revised this? Thirty-two scholars of the highest eminence backed by 50 cooperating denominations, they went and produced this book. And what the Christian world says about it, you don't have to agree with that, but this is what they say. Church of England newspaper says, the finest version which has been produced in the present century. In the present century. Okay. Times Literary Supplement says, a completely fresh translation by scholars of the highest eminence. Language which is not only dignified, but also contemporary. Fullest use of the resources of, me, by, uh, of modern scholarship. Life and work says, the well-loved characteristics of the authorized version combined with a new accuracy of translation. The time says, the most accurate and close rendering of the original. They, what is the text? I mean, the, it's not written there, the text where they... Oh, yes, 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 yes. They say, they say, they say, this one here, see the King James Version yeah. and the Dewey Version are based on the ancient manuscripts. Okay. They use the word ancient manuscript. Yes, sir. This one here is based on the most ancient manuscript. Okay. So when you open this, you find the Trinity is thrown out. Why? Because in the most ancient manuscript that they have, the verse is not there. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. So if the most ancient doesn't have it, and it's a later on, a Christian has crept in, into the book, he said, no, we take it out. We take it out. So they took it out. They took out the verse. These are not Trinitarian. I mean, these are not Jehovah's Witnesses. But do you know the verse is taken out? From the Revised Standard Version. Oh, I mean, Version 5 7. Yes. Not only in the Revised Standard Version. Even other versions like NIV. No, no, no. But no. Yeah. this one was the first. In 1952, yeah. they came out with this. Is all to take it out. Okay. To be fair, the nearer to the source, the more authentic it thing would be, ought to be. If the time of Jesus is something was written, it will be more authentic than this thing written 100 years later. The 100 years later will be more authentic than written 500 years later. This is common sense. So, going back to the most ancient manuscripts... Why, why, why do you say so, Mr. David? Because perhaps he, uh, someone gave us something to copy. Perhaps right. you are even hundred of us. Right, right, right. You copy the same thing. Right, right, right. I no, know. no, no, no. You but you, no, no, no. no. While you are copying in, you, you, you in, 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 uh, interpolated that verse on the Trinity. See, but when did you do that? You did it 600 years after the, after the, uh, after the event. So now, the later you have a chance of adding, you're trying to explain things. You only trying to explain. You're trying to be helpful. That's this guy, Vigilus of Thapsus, was supposed to be doing about that verse. See, he wrote a marginal note. 
for his own edification or for his children. When the people had their manuscript for reproduction, they, the marginal note they brought into the main text. Now when you discover that, that look, this is what has happened. So honesty demands that you take it out. So they took it out. Similarly, the word begotten. The word begotten was also not there. Yeah. They took it out. Who did there it? There is no in the No. But they're not trying to placate to us. The Muslim says, don't talk like that. Yeah. Don't say Jesus is the only begotten son. Don't talk like that. Yeah. Now these people are now... We say, don't say Trinity. They took the verse on the Trinity out. Not to placate us, but honesty. Scholarship demanded that they do honest things. That if it's not in the most ancient, this is a later accretion, take it out. So they took it out. I admire them for that. Then, about the word begotten. <laughs> the word begotten is taken out. Why? He said, this is a later accretion also. Right? Then they took out... And I said, this is what happens now with all, all the trans, including the Jehovah's Witnesses. I mean, I'm talking like brothers. You are talking to you like a son. You see? Yeah. You mustn't get emotional. No, <laughs> no, I'm no, going, I, 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 no, I can see. No, you have seen. Have, no, I've, I've seen yeah. Great qualities in you, my son. I'm telling you, you know, you are the first guy I have come across who is prepared to listen. You don't have to agree with me. But you are giving me a hearing. I can see you giving me an honest hearing. I said, look, this is what it is. Then the verses on, verses are Mark. Chapter 16, you are there. Chapter 16, where does it end? Where does it end? Chapter 16. Chapter 16. The last verse. 20. Right. Now let me, can I just have a look at you? Yeah. Right. Yes. Right, 16. Right. Uh, long conclusion and short conclusion. Now, this long conclusion. Would you conclude that this is the word of God or not? According to your your reading, you read this 16, verse 8, and then the verse 9 now, after he rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene. Mm -hmm. Do you accept that as the word of God? I just have to accept it. No, now, yeah, you see, this now, they, <laughs> they played a trick. Yeah. on you, on you, by telling you all these things. Certain ancient manuscripts, ACD and version vision, mm -hmm, add the following long conclusion, but which mm -hmm, omit, which was mm -hmm, omit. Now you, me, you read that, it doesn't matter to you. And all this, all this code, yeah. code, code. I don't know whether you understand all these codes. Yeah, because some of the things are the names of the manuscripts or the uh, uh, videos. So, so you say, well, this is not of interest to you. You carry on reading, believing that this is whole of chapter 16. Am I right? Am I right? That is the common trait of anybody. If I didn't know this, I would accept it as such. That this is 16, longer ending this, and this is the word of God. This is also the word of God, if I, either this way or that way, all the word of God. But now, all the trick is in here. Nobody really is expected, the commonality, the ordinary man, to know what the hell you're talking about. But these people did the job. They did the job. The revisers. Yeah. And that verse 8. Okay. And this is added as a, as a footnote. The footnote. Right. A footnote is not the Bible. Yeah, it means they're not really, they don't have the evidence that they're right. 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 It tells you here. Other texts and versions add Mark 16, 9 to 20, the following passage. Others. Right. This is. Other ancient authorities add, after the verse, mm, no. this is not the word of God. This is not in the original manuscripts. The oldest manuscript that they have, these are not there. These are later editions. Yeah, I, really, I really get your point, Mr. Tilly, because even in the like this version I'm using one. Well, I mean, I, I prefer to use all the versions, but right? I cannot carry them all. Correct, 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 correct. Okay, even in this version I'm using, you know, yes. there are other uh, verses in the King James Version. Right. For example, like uh, yeah, John, 6, John 6 verse 4, right. the angel used to uh, descend and to stir the water of that pool, you know. Right. But now in the newer version, I mean, that thing is not, that, 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 that verse is not found. So I, I, I really get what you are trying to, I mean, I, I'm really getting your point as well. Like the woman caught in adultery. 
it is taken out from here. You see? This so even if you can look at this pilot, where is the thing that you Yes. They have taken it out. Even if you can look at this. Okay. For example, there are areas in, 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 in this pilot here where they are very really only situated. Yes. Like this, just look at this one. Oh, right. Oh, it's not there. Right. Numbers are slowing down. And five. But it's certain. Uh, yeah. Chapter so 8, John 8. Just one second. John 8. John chapter 8. Right. 8. Right. 8. All of a sudden. Uh -huh. Right. Starts with verse 12. How can you start with verse 12? How can you start with verse 12? Did you notice this before? I think I've seen that before, but now, as you said, I didn't... <laughs> you didn't pay attention to this. I didn't ask myself why. No, why, 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 why. Yeah. Now, they say, that it's put it down here in, the, in a footnote. You have done this honestly. This, you have done this honestly. Yeah. But Mark chapter 16, you have done a dishonest trick. Same thing what you did here, you should do to that. This thing. Here's a footnote. But you say, longer conclusion, shorter conclusion. In other words, that the back of the people's mind while doing the job, they want to teach you something, some, some, uh, from their point of view. They don't want to let the word be gotten go. Trinity, yes. It's out. They'll say, look, even in the, uh, uh, the, the Revised Standard Version, it's thrown out as a fabrication. Yeah, but no. So you, you're going to quote, you're going to quote that. You say, look, 32 scholars of the highest eminence, led by 50 cooperating denominations, they rejected it. You will quote that. But, no, but when, 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 when it suits you, when it suits you, yeah. you quote that yeah. and you stick by that. Yeah. But now, if this thing doesn't suit you. Because it says now that those who believe in Jesus cannot have faith in Him, they will be able to take up serpents and drink poisonous stuff. Good sales point for getting converts. So you said, I will keep it. You retain that. So you still play. No, there are certain places that say, look, I, I congratulate you. Yeah, like that for that, calling. Like that, that, that text, you, I mean, that verse you're you 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 quoting. But you won't get that if you can just try and look for it in the newer translation. No, because which was that? I think it should be Matthew 7, 16 or something. Let me try okay. and look for it. I don't know. Yes, I've got another version to see that can, can look at this one. This one? This one? King James Owen? How be this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting? Mm -hmm. F21 yeah, is missing. It says here. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. It says it's missing. Now, but you see now, at the back of the mind, see, subjectively, everybody is trying to do a job, subjectively. Let me see now, you know, how I can fit this in, how I can, you know, according to my teachings. So, in other words now, the tempering is still going on. By the Jehovah's Witnesses, for example, over 200 places you introduce the word Jehovah in the New Testament. Yeah, in the, in the, in the New Testament, right. for those who prepare the New Testament, you need to... Yeah. I mean, our uh, common, common. Yeah, right? common. Right. Right. This is a new world, you know, uh, the, of the Christian Greek scriptures in New Testament. We know what you're talking about. The Jehovah's Witnesses have introduced the word Jehovah some 287 times. Jehovah. But it's an amazing situation that in the most, the oldest manuscripts that you have, the word Jehovah does not occur even once. Including that Jesus Christ is quoting when he was questioned, he says, Master, what command is the first of all? Mark chapter 12, verse 29. And Jesus answers and says unto him, in the Hebrew language, if he was speaking Hebrew, I'm sure, you Swazi, his Swazi prophet coming to the Swazis and speaking to them in Afrikaans, does it make sense? No, it don't make sense. Huh? The prophet of the Zulus talking yeah. Greek to them, does it make sense? It doesn't yeah, make sense. Because he believed that Jesus was, uh, I mean, it's obvious, was speaking Hebrew, although the, all the record, Gospels were written in Greek. Greek, Greek, except Matthew, I think, it was written in Hebrew, or in the Rasa, that it was written in Greek. So your authors also said it was written in Hebrew, right? So now, when he's talking to the Jews, and he's quoting, what is he quoting? He says, Shama Israelu Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. That's what he said. Now, you have no right to put a word there that he didn't utter. 
If he said, Allah, Allah, lama sabachthani on the cross, you have no right to say, he said, Allah, Allah, lama tarattani. You have no right. I have no right to do that. Mm-hmm. Although, that is the nearest. Okay. You see, when Jesus said, Allah, Allah, lama sabachthani, it is, I say, he said, Allah, Allah, lama tarattani. By the way, Jesus, by the way, so you are quoting from the Hebrew scriptures. Right, right, right. right. But, okay. now, if you now, quoted, but now, the name of God doesn't appear in the Hebrew scriptures. Not right, right. But the thing is this now. What he quoted, you have no right to interpose your words. You have to quote them. And I mean, Christ, I mean, the, the name of God appeared there. No right to think what was the, what is written there. When he's speaking to the people, did he use the word Jehovah? Probably not, because the people were not uttering the word. His nation was not uttering it. Right. And as soon as he uttered it, there would be a, 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 an uproar. They say, where the hell did you get that from? It's not in the book. They say, no, 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 look, Jesus would have corrected them. He says, no, it is in the book, but you people, you know, your tradition of your elders, they told you have done this and that and that. He would have rectified them. But no, he must have uttered them to suit whatever the people were used to. He says, Shama Israel, that's how they say, today even. Shama Israel Adonai Elohainu Adonai Echad. But you know the, 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 the Jewish tradition that, you know, the Jews don't think that you should, I mean, it's their tradition right. that the name of God should not be pronounced. Right. That's right. why right. even the way it was pronounced was lost because we only have four alphabets. Right, right. So right. I mean, the way it is pronounced, others say right. Yahweh or Jehovah, right. anyway, it's right. okay, well, right. as long as you pronounce right. it. Right. Right. So right. Like Jesus was... So if he was, if he was talking to a people, like if I'm talking to the Jews, I've been talking to the Jews in the Temple of David, on the, on the Ridge Road. And then I quoted them the, the Shema, the first commandment. I said, Shema Israel, Adonai Elohim, Adonai Echad. He says, perfect. He said, you pronounce it better than the Jews, because of Arabic. You yeah. see, it's a sister language. Yeah. And I'm trying to pronounce it, not trying to, I'm used to Arabic. So my so- sound is more Arabic-like. Yeah. So it sounds more authentic yeah. than what they are used to, the westernized uh, Hebrew. Yeah. You see? So he says, no, that's perfect. Nobody says, no, you should have read the Jehovah. Nobody says that. So, in the, in the time of Jesus... Not because of their tradition? No, no, you're used to your language, your, your tongue. Now, you speak to me, I can make out that an African on the line. When I speak to you, maybe you can make out that an Indian is on the line. I'm speaking English, good English, but there's something about my voice, my tone, everything tells you, this guy is an Indian, this guy is an African, this guy is an Arab, I can make out. This is an Arab talking English, but he's an Arab. The way his tongue is. You are from Cape Town. I can make out that you are from Cape Town. Yeah, because so, no, no, the, you're talking English, but now I can make out that this guy is a foreigner. Yeah, the accent. The accent, accent. accent. You're not trying to. You're not trying to talk like a Zulu or like a Khosa or a Swazi, but there's something in your tone, everything tells me that you are an African. You get the idea? At that time, an Indian. Right? No one what good English I speak. I said, this guy is an Indian. So similarly now, a Jew, a Jewish prophet, talking to the Jews, and he's quoting them. They're asking, what is the first commandment? So they're used to hearing. Shema Israel Adonai Elohim Adonai Echad. He must have said that. If he said anything to the contrary, immediately they would have picked fault with him. Is that, why is this like this? You know, all our uh, learned, the Pharisees are saying it, uh, Adonai, Adonai, where did you get Jehovah, Jehovah from? Is it there? He said, let them fool, it is written there, but we pronounce it like this, but this is tradition of your father, so he would have rectified that. But there's no rectification. So now, even if it was there, if all the manuscripts, not a single manuscript has the word Jehovah, it's a devilish thing. It's a devilish thing for anybody to do. That they obliterated the word Jehovah from the 27 books. If the devil can succeed with that, such a simple thing, man, they never succeeded with that. How many other things he can succeed with? If he can succeed with, you know, the most important thing to the Jehovah's Witness is the name. What's his name? I said, what's his name? I said, right, what's his name? So now I as a Muslim, I'm telling you that his name is not Jehovah. You see? You say there's a tetragrammaton. Yes. I say, yes, yes, there's a tetragrammaton. is there. I say, yes, I see it there. 6,973 times. Now, it was 6,823 times before the Jehovah's Witnesses used to say. 6,823. The latest I'm reading now, this is now, according to the counting, is 6,973. 
Because they have some other places, Lord, 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 they can say no. Maybe we can introduce the word Jehovah, Jehovah. So they introduce 6,973 6, times Jehovah. So I said, now, what is the word there? It's a tetragrammaton. So I'm asking you, my son, what is a tetragrammaton? It's those alphabets. No, no, no. I'm asking you, what does the word tetragrammaton mean? Tetragrammaton. Okay, Mr. J.D., I don't know the meaning, but I know what tetragrammaton no, no, is, no, no. but I don't know you its see, meaning. You see, every Tom, Dick and Harry among the Jehovah's Witnesses, he was the word tetragrammaton. Yes. I have come across learned men in Illinois University, <laughs> uh, professors and all. I said, now, how many of you know the word tetragrammaton? Not one. Lecturers and students in the University of Illinois. Not one. And it's funny, <laughs> you guys don't know the word tetragrammaton, then every Tom, Dick and Harry among the Jehovah's Witnesses, they know the word. And how is it that you lecturers and you university students, you don't know the word tetragrammaton? What is a tetragrammaton? Tetra means four and grammaton means letters. It means a four letter word. Now you are using a fourteen letter word to describe a four letter word, I want to know why. And this, you say, all are acceptable. Uh, so, Jehovah, 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 and Jehovah. Mm -hmm. Alright, it's not 50, 25. Different pronunciation. Mine will fit in any way. Yahuwah. I said, you see, Yah and Hua in Hebrew, what it means. Yah is a vocative and exclamation, meaning O. Oh. And Hua in Hebrew means He, and Hu. H -u. Who in Arabic means he. Hua, hua means he in Hebrew, and who in he, uh, Arabic means he. So Yahua means literally O oh, He. Who? Elohim. El in Hebrew means God. E L A H. Ela. In Hebrew means God. A L A H. Allah in Arabic means God. A L L A H in Arabic means God. See? Isn't L? Isn't it? Isn't uh, uh, so what? I mean Elohim. Right. Elohim. Right. Im. Im is a plural of respect in Hebrew language. There are two types of plurals in Arabic and Hebrew. Because what I know about this word is it is in plural. Right, right, right. right. Okay. That's why it's not Father, Son and Holy Ghost. Yes, I believe that it's not a plural of majesty, something like that. That's what I'm telling you. Yeah, okay. This is in Arabic and Hebrew. There are two types of plurals in our languages. Okay. There is a plural of numbers and a plural of respect. Yes, right. So this is a plural of respect. In Arabic and Hebrew, you ask the Jew, how many gods are there? He says one. But he says, there's im here. He said, no, this is my language. This is we talk like that. Elohim, out of respect and awe. Im. In my language, in our native language also. My technique. I ask you, what's your name? See, in my language, I say, Taru hu namche. Taru means thy. What is thy name? So you'll answer me. Then you say, what is thy name? You're going to ask me the same way. So I don't talk to you like that. Yeah. I will say, Aap ka kya naam hai? Aap, Aap means, what is the name of you all? I'm actually asking, what is your name? Yeah. But I say, what is the name of you all? That's out of respect. So you'll answer me. Then you say, Aap ka kya naam hai? Same thing, what are you going to use? Now I'm teaching you how to be respectful. So I use respect to you. I say, Aap ka kya naam hai? I say, Tera kya naam hai? Tera. That is, what is thy name? But no, I said, no, no, aapka kya naam hai, my little child, aapka kya naam hai, what is the name, literally means the name of you all, but I don't mean that, I mean what is thy name, but with respect, so you can learn to respect me, in turn, you want to know my name, you also see, use the same word, say aapka kya naam hai, what is your name, sir, you know, right. So, El in Hebrew means God, Ella in Hebrew means God, spell it in sir, E-L-A, -E say E-L-A-H, Allah, I said, that's nothing wrong, okay. nothing wrong. So now this uh, Allah is Arabic. Right, right. So now, I said, now this A-L-A-H, I should, in the Schofield Bible. In the Schofield Bible, he spelled it as A-L-A-H. 
he spelled first as E L A H, then he spelled A L A H. So I said, okay, no, it's quite all right. Back by eight D Ds, he spelled the word God as A L A H. The only thing I said, I'm telling you is that you write as you like, but pronounce my language the way I, I want you to. Say Allah. No, you can't. It's difficult. Your tongue is not. Good. You say Allah. I said not Allah. Say Allah. Yeah. Like you're trying to teach me Zulu. Oh. Swazi. He said, Kham Nim Sar. Yeah. Yeah. So I said, I said, I said, Ka. I said, not Ka. Not Ka. Nim Sar. I said, Ka. I Ka. I said, Baniga. I Ka. Len Sanzi. E Yosi. Wa Yo. Ne Ka. Le Zinyosi. Wa Gutata. Wa Adla Pambi. Wa Abo. Ne Ka. So, now my son, I want to present you with the Quran. You have to come and see me, have a cup of tea. You do drink, drink tea, don't you? Pardon? You do drink tea. Unlike the seven day Adventists, they don't drink tea, they don't drink coke and all that. You do drink tea. Do you? Well, we drink tea. Yeah, yeah. So, next time when you come, have a cup of tea with me, and I want to present you with this book. Yes.